that I am using a lot of inflections in the way that I'm speaking, things that I, I haven't done before. I haven't used a lot of inflection in years past in the presentations and the works that I've brought forth. And that was necessary because inflection wasn't a part of the lesson. But inflection is a part of my heart. I I use a lot of that because I'm trying to get different points across. And the heart is about all possibilities. And inflection is nuanced. you got to pay attention to the intention behind that. And if one isn't paying attention, then they're missing the point of what's being said. So I change my voice, obviously. Sometimes I'm being sarcastic towards the system, this this reality and its setup and the ideas that it brings forth. And I do that because it's proving out a point. That's what I'm. my intention is to do. So the reason I bring this up is because I noticed that there was one person, because of my change of inflection, that tried to make it seem that I don't mean that I'm literally homeless when it was just an inflectionary change of my tone, my voice, as if I'm a third person talking about having a home. I used the first person. I have a box to live in. I wasn't indicating myself. I changed my inflection to indicate that, but Again, there was a commenter that tried to make this seem as if I'm pointing out that I'm not actually in a homeless situation. And you see, the, these these nuances are constantly created, just constantly creating these points of confusion. And if I just keep chasing after every single one of these points of confusion, then... I'm just going to go in circles again and again, around and around, and get nowhere. I think that that's also the point. That's why I, I call it pot stirring. You know, it's literally like taking a spoon and putting it in a pot and just stirring it around and keeping one from actually getting any further with what's important, what's important to the overall message. So I'm not going to keep doing this. I just wanted to point that particularity out because there is, yeah, just there's a lot of either artificial out there or just people who aren't really taking anything seriously. I don't know how they found their way to this channel. I mean, I don't understand all the algorithms or what people are presented as options as you should check this out next how how this channel works in that way and people might not even be searching for answers to this reality and yet they're presented one of my videos as something that they should actually look at they should watch i think that's just all part of the design the whole setup of the thing it it really wants to tear me down in as many ways as possible and use use people that they feel are vulnerable, if you will. So look, he's influencing people to do things that they otherwise wouldn't have done. And that's the setup. And I'm going to address that right now, which is a point of responsibility. This needs to be addressed because I see it's another potential setup. Every choice that you as an individual make is your choice. The end. Do not take me as a point of influence in any way. I'm going about my journey my way. And I'm just talking about my journey. The end. This is my choice. All my choice. And what you choose to do with your life is what you will choose to do with your life. I need to address this and make that point completely clear. I don't mean that in any cryptic way. That is being crystal clear. You will choose to do what you will choose to do, and you 
will deal with whatever consequences of your choices that you will deal with, as will I with my choices. That's how individuality works. I am not here to influence anyone, no one. Zero. If you do not like what I'm talking about, please feel free to leave and unsubscribe if you are subscribed. That's I have to maintain that. That's the truth. I am not forcing anyone to listen. I'm not begging anyone to listen. I'm just talking about my personal journey. My choices, what I'm doing in the moment, the end. And I'm dealing with all of the consequences. Absolutely. They are mine to deal with because they are my individual choices. And I'm not here to influence anyone, no one. See, there's nothing cryptic about that. I'm being very clear. If you choose to do something with your life based on what you've heard someone talk about, that's your choice. That's going to be on you, what that choice will do, any consequences, good or bad. That's how, that's how individuality and responsibility works. If you don't like what I have to say, no one's forced you to listen. This is just an open public channel. I'm just talking. You can, if you want, you can just conceptualize everything that I've ever brought forward as a piece of fiction. Totally. Just the totality is just all fiction. That's up to you to decide. I'm not telling you what to think, what to do. None of that. See how clear I'm being? I'm being very, very clear. I need to address this because I see this system, it just wants so badly to set me up as some kind of figurehead that, oh, look, he influenced people to make these choices. He was a bad man. He influenced so many, and now they're suffering. You see? That's what it wants to do, so that's why this needs to be addressed right now. Go ahead, live your life how you see fit. 100%. Don't let me do anything to steer you in any other direction other than what you would just do yourself. Live your life. I am a nobody. A nobody. I have to repeat this again. I'm a bum. And listen to what society says. You don't listen to a bum. A bum is a nobody. So there it is. And I'm just, I am speaking the truth. This is the clear truth. I am homeless. There's no deception with that. I don't have a home anymore. That's a straight up fact. Yesterday I used an inflection change as an example to show that what death does is it renders everyone homeless. And just because one feels that they have a box to go into right now temporarily that, oh, I'm not homeless. See, I just changed the inflection there. Well, I'm not homeless. I used the first person. I didn't say I'm not homeless because I'm indicating that I personally am not. That's what inflection does. So it's no different than changing the tone musically. You change the tone because you want to put out a different sound, a different nuance. It makes something feel different. That's the point of doing that. And when I talk about certain things, that's why I'm doing that. Because that tone, that intonation, if you will brings about a different form of delivery. It brings about a different feeling, and with a different feeling comes a different type of understanding. Without that different type of understanding, then we can't get into abstractions. And so much of what has always been presented is about abstractions. I think anyone who's done any research 
for any period of time realizes and understands that, you start to deal with immensities of abstractions. That's just the way it is. If one can't see the abstractions, then things such as symbols can never be conceptualized or understood correctly. Symbols are an ultimate abstraction. You need to dig through layers and layers of subtlety. You're just looking at a picture, essentially. And then you're trying to find tons of meaning just from that picture, that symbol. And the only way to do that is through the concept known as abstraction. Again, if anyone hasn't conceptualized or learned that process within themselves, then they haven't really done the inner work, the inner research. Because all all this inner work is abstractions upon abstractions upon abstractions. Just endless reflections of that. It's not just surface level that i feel is is properly understood by anyone who's truly seeking the the reality of this place the truth for themselves you've come to understand that knowing what abstractions are about is essential it's not just important it's essential and even in terms of knowing one's personal responsibility what choice actually means and the consequences of choice, as I said, good or bad, well, that's all abstraction too. It's kind of like you get a sight line, a potential sight line for what will this choice do to me? What are going to be its consequences? So you maybe write it out for yourself. You write out the potentials. Well, if I do this, then here are the potential results of that choice of my actions by walking towards that choice and then you weigh the options if you do choice a here are the potential results and if you do choice b here are the potential results and you accept of your own individual volition and responsibility the results of that choice That's the thing. You can't blame somebody else because of your choice. Blame is lame. It's right in the word. I've said this before in past works. Take the letter B out of blame and it's lame. That's it's a it's another indicator. Blame is lame. So because maybe one's choices didn't lead them to where they thought it was going to go, what was going to happen. All the things evolved. They thought it was just going to be all sunshine and rainbows, maybe. You know, they heard someone talk about, like, say, these investors, you know, that promote their channels all over. Invest in this stock and you're just going to be rich, you know, as a good example. And then people listen to that advice and they dump a bunch of their money, their savings uh, into that stock because, oh, well, this person, you know, he's obviously he's really wealthy. He's rich. Uh, He knows what he's talking about. I'm going to listen to him. And then they pour their life savings into that stock uh, just on this piece of advice that this investor uh, had mentioned in whatever presentation that they put out. And the, the person who listened, yeah, pours their life savings, let's say, into that stock and then the stock just bombs and they lose all that money. Well, it was still a choice. You understand there's a risk. You understand the stock market is, it's like a casino. It's a gamble. I mean, it doesn't matter how rich or intelligent the person giving that advice was that you listened to. It doesn't matter. There was still a risk. That's the point. But you still chose to take that risk because you trusted, you know, you trusted that risk you know, was going to pay off for you big time. And it didn't. And this is just an example, right? And then you say, you know, well, now what? I've lost all my money. Now I'm blaming the person who presented that information. I'm going to blame him and he destroyed my life. Now I hate him and I'm going to do everything to take him down. Well, that's blame and that's lame. 
at the end of the day, it was your choice to dump all your money in that stock and put your trust in the stock market. You can't blame someone who presented their personal message and then you made a choice based on that message. I hope what I'm bringing forth today is being understood. This is what personal responsibility is about. That's literally what it's about. You can't blame somebody for making your choice. I'm making a choice and I'm just, I'm making lots of choices. I'm just talking about them. And I'm talking about some of the consequences, obviously, because of those choices. And I'm contending with them straight up. And I see the potential for the pot to be stirred with this message now. Oh, see what he was saying. He doesn't believe in anything he's saying. He's He's been leading people astray this whole time. What the message is not true. What you're not doing anything of what you're saying. It's just, see, it's no matter what angle I come from anymore there's always going to be another angle to slam me against the wall to make it seem like I'm contradicting myself and so on that's that's the problem I I really hope this is being comprehended that this is the kind of corners that I'm being backed into like over and over and over again and the problem with with bringing forth this type of message that I've been talking about, my personal message, my personal journey, is it just always has another angle to just back me into a corner with. No matter what. Like, over and over again. You'll, you'll see it. You'll see it with this presentation in, in the comment section again. It's just, it's so obvious. And... In the in the time to come, it it'll try to back me into other corners, and I'll have to address those. It's just how it is. It, it's it's like I said, this is the tightrope walk that I'm on, and we are in a binary uh, system, if you will, and that's the problem with the contradiction of everything. Everything is a contradiction here. Everything, it's light and dark. See, it's. It's not the truth. It's just a half-truth and another half-truth. It's which side of the coin do you want to look at at any given moment? And so I look at heads, and then it says tails. Okay, well then I'll say tails, and then it says heads. It's, it's always got an opposite play, no matter what. And it'll always pin it on you. Look, he's contradicting himself. He's saying it's tails now. Well, no, I'm saying it's the same coin. But I'm just, I'm telling you that here we're looking at tails now. And then, oh, look, he's hes saying that, you know, the exact opposite of what he said before, just a week ago or a day ago. And then I'll say, well, no, let's look at heads now. Oh, look, he's doing it again. <laughs> it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do. You look at it from one side and then it, it backs you in the corner and, and calls you a, a hypocrite. You know, someone who contradicts themselves. But the whole system is a contradiction. That's the problem. And that's what really, from the beginning of all my works I presented, that's what I put forth. You're dealing with a contradiction. That's paradox as well. And the truth, which is the heart, is the resolving of that paradox. It takes those opposite sides, the two sides of the coin, and makes them one. So there's no opposites anymore. See, opposite, it's in the word to oppose it. Oppose it. Opposite. Well, in the kingdom of the heart, there is no opposition. There's no team A versus team B. It's not some competition and rivalry system. That's all of these ideas. And that's why I can constantly make it seem as if I'm contradicting myself because I can only talk about one side of the coin at a time. See, that's the problem. I only have one voice and I can only bring a part of the message forth 
as I speak continuously in a forward direction, just like I'm doing right now. So because of the linear, linear aspect of that, I can only speak to one side of the coin at the time while trying to depict that, look, there's two sides, but I can only speak to one side. And that creates a contradiction. And to see the truth, it's about resolving the contradiction so that it becomes a unity again. That's, it's so hard, and again, going back to abstraction, unless one understands abstractions, then forget about even attempting to do that, especially within oneself, because that's where the vision needs to be corrected, as I've said, within oneself. And unless one even realizes it needs to be corrected, I mean, that's the other problem too. How many even can fathom that they hold within themselves the incorrect vision. I mean, well, forget it. Uh, this system wants everyone to believe that they're just perfect the way they are. Well, you're just perfect. Don't change a thing and watch all the TV shows. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's it's just such an immensity to deal with. And every last one of us that has been fighting for the truth and fighting for others to see the truth, you know that struggle. You know that it's hard enough just having attempted to try to bring forth certain revelations about what's going on. Look at, yeah, the chemtrail phenomenon, you know, just trying to point up to the sky to anyone, anyone that, you know, might be in your family or friend circle, whatever, like, look, they're spraying the sky every day. How many have wanted to even look up from their cell phone to even pay attention to that? It's like, oh, I can't be bothered. You know, I'd rather just, I'm going to go watch the football game. Three hours tonight. It's just way more important to do that than, like, pay attention to, like, planes. What, what are you talking about? Planes? Are, no, they're not. They're not spraying. If they were spraying, we would all know about it. <laughs> and it's just, I'm pointing out to you, you don't know about it. You know, uh, all of us who have struggled with that, you know, it's you don't know about it. That's why I'm pointing it out. And then they're saying, if if it was happening, I would know about it. <laughs> it's there's There's a contradiction example, right? And just that constant struggle with those we, we love and care about, you know, trying to point these things out to anyone in this reality, you know, and just on and on, like tell anyone, oh, the, there's fluoride in the water, you know, uh, and uh, that comes from obviously them scrubbing the smokestacks of industry, you know, it's just this horrendous chemical and they try to tell you that it's good for your teeth, you know, and just the amount of research that's linked with uh, bone cancer, osteoporosis, just all kinds of just horrendous things that fluoride does, uh, calcifies your pineal gland, as a lot of people know, so on and so forth, right? And trying to tell anyone that, you know, even just don't use fluoridated toothpaste even, uh, so on, you know, uh, forget it. You know, they don't want to hear it. And they immediately go to their tap, you know, uh, get their water from the municipal system uh, that's just, laced with fluoride and they drink a glass right in front of you and say I don't care fluoride is good for me <laughs> it's it's just ridiculous you know it's a basic psychological reversal tactic you know that a lot of these people use you know they get told this terrible thing and they immediately go and do the terrible thing as if that's proving something and it's not proving out anything it's just uh indicating that they psychologically can handle the truths that are being told to them, the, the fact that this reality is nothing of what has been presented to us at all. It's not just this hunky-dory nice place, and we just have our little experience and then wait for death, and then we just truck along, and it doesn't matter. So that's the basic presentation that it wants us to believe. And anyone who's looked into, obviously, all the things wrong. I mean, look, 
uh, anyone studying, you know, the Federal Reserve System, you know, just the uh, immensity of that, you know, look into the straw man phenomenon, your name being spelled in all caps, you know, uniform commercial code, uh, just the, the entire realm of what's been called conspiracy, you know, just the amount of information that one has to sift through to understand the level of deception and, and what's going on, the amount of deceit, the amount of lies, the amount of just general evil that's going on, it becomes overwhelming once you start to dig into it truly. And yeah, for the vast majority, even one thing was too much. You just told them there's fluoride in the water and they almost wanted to faint, you know, and just literally throw you up against the wall and and say who are you to tell me what reality is <laughs> uh, they they couldn't even handle being told there's fluoride in the water let alone you tell them everything else oh by the way you're stuck in an endless reincarnation cycle slave system of hell oh well, yeah forget it uh, it's it's not going to happen and so yeah this system you know it wants to uh, pick pick people that it feels are vulnerable. Recommend this channel to vulnerable people. And, oh, you, you're messing me up. I'm all messed up. Now I'm doing things I wouldn't have ever done because I've been listening to your message. And that's just a bunch of crap. That's just a, a, a play of this system to, to attempt to uh, try to corner me in some way again. And that's why I reiterate and I'm being, yeah, repetitive in my clarity because it's necessary. You will make your decisions how you will the end. If you want to listen to this message or any of my messages for any length of time, that's your choice. That's on you. All of the reasons why you choose to listen, that's all you has nothing to do with me. I'm not an influencer. You know, there's that whole phenomenon. People get paid to be influencers or call themselves influencers. I am no such thing. I'm a nobody. No one should listen to me. See, how's that for clarity? No one, no one should listen to me at all. I'm just speaking out into the void, if you will, out in the open. Is there anyone out there? See, it's, there's no one out there. I'm just calling out into the void, into this abyss, wondering if there's anyone out there. Sort of like, yeah, uh, there is that there is that movie with uh, Will Smith, the I Am Legend. You know, he keeps putting out that radio message, wondering if there's actually anyone out there. And then there's a woman that uh, finds him and... He's been speaking to mannequins the whole time, you know, all these years, and then finally comes across uh, someone real, and it's like a figment of his imagination. He just can't even fathom it. He he doesn't believe that that this woman is real. So he just kind of is beside himself for a little while. So yeah, just think of you know, think of this is what I'm doing. You know, it's the same thing. This is my radio message. Is there anyone real out there? Is there anyone at all? It just, there's no one out there. Man, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm alone in the world. I'm alone. See, this is the thing. It's, it's backed me into so many corners that I, I have to go to the absurd. I have to go to that level just to, to be clear with my message. Don't listen to me in the slightest. I'm just a nobody just calling out into the abyss to see if anyone's there. It's just a radio message, you know, like Will Smith in that I Am Legend movie. So, yeah, th these things needed to be pointed out. They needed to be brought forth. That clarity needs to be done. I am, I am no leader of anything at all. Follow nobody, unsubscribe to everybody. Be your own individual. This is your journey. This is all about your choices, 100%. Free will, free agency. 
And when you make choice, you accept the reality of those choices and, and the consequences, as I said, good or bad. It doesn't matter. And of course, that's, that's how choice works. That's exactly how it works. Everyone understands this. You can't point the finger and say, he made me do something. I'm not making anyone do anything. Nothing whatsoever. And I never will. I will never say you should. Look up the etymology of that word. If you do it carefully enough, you'll see that it lends itself to a German word that actually means guilt. The word should. So when someone says you should do this, they're essentially saying, I'm going to try to guilt you or guilt trip you into doing this. It's important to obviously understand the words for these reasons. So I've, I've never liked that word should. I should, you should do this. Well, no, no one should do anything. So ignore that. Absolutely. If I erroneously said or used that word, ignore it. See, I'll, I'll admit my mistakes. See, that's, that's the only thing that can correct something is an admittance of mistakes. Look, he's, he's admitting he made all the mistakes. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't matter. Like I said, it'll back me into a corner. Every single thing that I say now, it'll use against me. There is not a single thing that I can say that it won't create a contradiction and use it against me. That's the point. So that's why I say be very, very weary on your toes. Very much on your toes. See, I'm, I'm, when I say be very wary, I'm speaking to myself, right? I'm telling myself to be wary, to be on my toes. That's what I'm doing. I'm... I am, I'm being vigilant in that regard, as it said, and being very attentive. So when I say be attentive, I'm speaking to myself, be attentive. Yes, I will be very attentive. I will be keen to my environment. That's the other thing too. Uh, on the street, you become very keen, very attentive, very open-eyed to all of the details. You can't overlook anything or anyone, your surroundings. You're, you're at peak awareness all the time. You have to be. So that's, yeah, in this reality, I mean, there's just a lot of people ready to take advantage of one. And I mean, that's, that's obvious. Uh, now everyone's looking for their cut. You know, that's the whole commerce system. Uh, there's so many salesmen always just trying to reach into your pocket. You know, that's the whole monetary system. I've spoken so much about, about that, right? It's why it's the wrong idea. You know, everyone just, I want my cut, you know, and I want to take advantage of whoever I can that might have some of those dollar signs, you know, so I can uh, proffer more advantage for myself by gathering them from you uh the representation of money equating to energy you know siphoning of energy which is the vampire system and so on that's uh that's why i've spoken so much to, about the monetary system and obviously the incorrectness of its idea and then it it'll try to point out well, you you've used money it's everyone's a slave. Everyone's a slave. You know, it's again, the example I said yesterday, you're a prisoner, you know, and you need to be fed. And then it calls you a hypocrite because you're eating the prison food. And money is no different. You know, in this system, it forces you quite literally forces you to use its money system. And then if you speak out against the idea of money, and but you're still forced to use it, it calls you a hypocrite. Oh, see, he's a hypocrite. He admitted it. He used money. <laughs> I'm a slave in the system. What does one think? I've spoken out prominently 
about the incorrectness of the idea. I don't believe in the idea. I never have, and I never will. It's an incorrect idea. I'm not a hypocrite, though as a slave being, having been forced to use it at various times. That doesn't make me a hypocrite. It makes me a slave to a system. I have never said that I was free. Oh, I'm completely free. When did I say that? Absolutely never. I am not free of this place, of its control over over me in so many ways, just as it has the same control over everyone in so many ways. That's a fact. That's that's the fact of how I see it. Again, this is my message. You don't have to believe in, in a single thing that I say. I'm not telling you that you have to believe. I've never said that. So I wanted to get those things across today. Uh, that's That's going to be today's post here. And again, I, I appreciate, you know, everyone freely who is giving their insights genuinely from the heart. That's always appreciated. Please continue to do that. And as I say, you know, time, you know, time is, is always, you know, against us. You know, it's the clock is always running out. Every day is the proof of that. You know, the day only lasts so long, you know, and then it's over. And you can't get it back. You know, you can't say, oh, I, I, I need to redo today. I need to redo it. Well, it, no, it's it's done. It's It's gone. It's too late. You don't get that day back. You don't get a redo. It's It's over. You had your time. You had the opportunity. It's done. So... Hopefully you spent it wisely, the inheritance of your time. And I, I'm probably going to get into that in my next talk, uh, the inheritance, you know, and and the importance of that understanding. All right. Take care out there, everyone. I'll talk to you again soon.